Welcome back everyone, it's Abdallah here with even more coverage from the PAX Pokemon League from PAX South 2015. If you guys are brand new to the series, you got a lot of catching up to do because this is the finale episode. This is it, we've made it from the very bottom all the way up to the top, the champion battle. This is gonna be epic, oh my god. So, in the description, there is a link to the playlist. You can get yourself caught up and found out how I won all of these awesome badges over here. All 13 badges, yes. We've earned them all, and now we get a shot at the champion. In case you guys don't know him, it's Mr. AGZ himself, uh, one of my very good friends and PokeTubers. It was awesome to see him become the uh, elected PAX Pokemon champ, but now it's time to show him who's boss. Will we do it? I don't know. Oh my god. So this is it. It was at the end of the night. Um, all of the gym leaders, PAX Pokemon League, has already disembarked. They went home because it's the last day of PAX, and it was me and Mr. AGZ in the Hyatt Hotel, ready to duke it out, and it's pretty much all, all stakes. All stakes. If I win, I become the PAX South Champion. If I lose, then Mr. AGZ gets bragging rights. This is no good, but it's going to be an epic battle. So. Stay tuned for it, here we go. So looking at his team, now he's been talking to me about his stupid Quagsire. I know what Quagsire does, it's unaware. Um, it does the power up punch, it does the skull, it does all that shenanigans. Um, he's using the Greninja that can, I don't really know any of his sets on any of these Pokemon. I know that um, Porygon 2 is bulky, usually has a bolt beam combo with recover. Um, so that's, that's all the knowledge that I have of it with the Ovio Light. So I got to knock that thing off as fast as possible. Scolipede usually leads off and uh, protects, gets the speed boost, baton passes them, maybe gets a swords dance up. Um, Togekiss does the flinching shenanigans. Um, Greninja can do anything. That's why he's banned in Smogan singles. Um, and the Landorus is a very, very good Pokemon that can come in, intimidate, set up rocks, um, do anything, to be honest. So... This is uh, pretty scary, pretty scary. So I have my notepad on me, I wrote all this Pokemon down. Um, I wrote down, you know, which Pokemon I need to check and counter certain Pokemon. Um, as you guys can see, um, I'm using the Vaporeon that has the, um, the Hidden Power Grass on it. So I'm gonna need this Vaporeon for that stupid Quagsire, and I hate Quagsire so much. So here we go, um, Conkelder is gonna do some work against Greninja and be able to knock off the Porygon 2. Um, Mega Manectric is going to outspeed his entire team. Um, Caesar has got the priority bullet punch. Uh, Klefki is there to set up screens. Uh, Landorus is there to set up rocks and possibly do some more work with the Intimidate. That's all I know. So brace yourselves, get some popcorn because this is going to be an awesome battle. Here we go, the final battle for the championship. This is it. Brace yourselves. Okay, Mr. AGZ. Ooh. Okay, leading out with Scolipede. Now, we know that Scolipede does. It's got the speed boost ability and it can baton pass. So I need to do something about this guy. He's going to go for the protect first turn. Um, that's good on his part. He probably already knows my, my set. I use Conkelder all the time on my live streams. So I don't have anything to take advantage of that protect. I'm going to continue to go for knockoff. I need to find out what item this guy's carrying. And plus, knockoff is great. So we had a focus sash. That's fun. Okay, so now he's got a couple speed boosts going. Um, he's going to baton pass it. Now, I'm thinking, okay, well, who the heck's he gonna baton pass to? And, or should I go for drain punch? Should I go for knockoff? I'm kind of at a loss as to what to do. So I go for knockoff, expecting him to switch out. Bam, so knockoff, and what am I knocking off? His metronome, okay. So a metronome is an item that the more you use an item, the more powerful it gets. I'm thinking he's gonna go for the air slash, just to get um, a, I don't know, a flinch off me. He predicts that, goes for the flamethrower, and gets a critical hit! God! Oh my god, that crit mattered so much, because I would have been able to paralyze, I would have been able to put at least a screen up. But no, he gets a crit, and that sucks, because now I lose Klefki. And all I can do is T-wave that thing. That was the most important thing, because I don't want to be flinched at all with this thing. I'm not messing around. So I need every one of my Pokémon to be stronger than this guy. Okay, so now that he's gonna switch out, I'm thinking he's gonna go into Landorus expecting an, um, a Thunderbolt, but he goes into Porygon 2 expecting that. Now he traces my Lightning Rod, so if I went for the Thunderbolt, that would have been a bad idea. So luckily for me, I'm going for Hidden Power Ice, um, expecting the Landorus switch. So 
he did a pretty good job of predicting that. So knowing what Pokemon he has, um, I'm just going to go for that Hidden Powder Ice. That does nothing. Look at that minuscule damage. Um, I'm not going to go for Volt Switch because he's just going to absorb it. So I'm going to bring in Conkelder. Um, not really sure what he wants to do, but he's going to switch out as well. Um, he sends out his Greninja. Now right over here, I can easily go for the Mach Punch and give super effective damage. But he goes for Shadow Sneak, maybe predicting that? I don't even know. Shadow Sneak on a, on a Greninja? I never see that. No, no way. So he predicted that very well. So I don't know if he's going to predict me to go for the, uh, the knockoff or what. But he goes for the um, extra sensory. Now he's turned into the psychic type. I am pretty bulky, so I should be able to take that. I'm going to be able to go for um, the knockoff, but he gets the flinch. He gets the flinch. Oh my god. That would have been so game changing. I would have knocked this guy out. He's probably going to go for another extra sensory. So I'm going to actually switch into Caesar because I can resist that very well. I don't know if this thing's got Hidden Power Fire or what, or if it's got Hidden Power Grass. I'm not sure. Um, so I just bring in Caesar to take the extra sensory. I could go for the Bullet Punch and do some pretty good damage, considering the fact that he's a Psychic type now. Um, or not. So now he, he brings in the Punk. Here comes this Punk, Quagsire. So this is going to be a resisted Bullet Punch. It's not going to do that much. But I'm not going to stay in and Swords Dance up because he's got the Unaware ability, which negates all stat changes uh, from the opposing Pokemon. He's got lefties. I can see that right over now. Do I want to stay in and knock off the lefties and allow him to do a Power Up Punch on me? Or should I go straight into Vaporeon and scare him out with a Hidden Power Grass? Um, knowing full well what this Pokemon does. So he goes for the Power Up Punch. He's at plus one now, so that's very amazing on his part. I don't know if he's going to go for the Protect, I don't know if he's going to switch out, but I have to go for this Hidden Power. I have to do it, because I need to get rid of that thing. So here we go, Scolipede, going in, going to resist the Hidden Power Grass. Good move on his part. He wanted to scout out for it, so uh, knowing full well that a Scolipede can take it, if it was that. So I'm not going to stay in on this guy. He's probably going to go for a Mega Horn. Um, I can go for the Landorist, I can go for the Intimidate, so in case he wants to... Um, pass it off to someone, he's going to pass the minus one attack as well. Um, so he went for the Protect. Um, I figured he'd go for either Megahorn or Protect, so the switch was pretty good on my part. Um, I don't know what he wants to do, but now that I know he's going to go for that Protect again, I'm going to be able to set up the Stealth Rock. So I saw right through that, got free rocks in the process. So right now, he's going to go for the Baton Pass. That's what I'm thinking. Instead, he goes for Megahorn. Which is really not that bad, um, considering the fact that it's not very effective. But I go for knockoff because I know that he was going to baton pass it out and someone else would have lost their item. So I don't know if he saw that and just decided to do a little bit of chip damage. But here we go. I don't want to stay in against this Greninja because Greninjas typically carry Ice Beam. And that'll be a bad idea for me to do that. Um, I don't want to risk the speed tie. or I, I, There's no way I can be faster than this thing, so there's no speed tie involved. Thinking that he's going for the Ice Beam, um, I switch into Caesar. Okay, so here we go. Am I going to get burnt by this Scald? I get burnt by the Scald. So he's got luck. He's got the crit at the beginning. He's got the flinch. He's got the burn. So now this Caesar is pretty much neutered. I can't do anything besides potentially knock off someone or bullet punch to do very, very minuscule damage. So right now, this Greninja is owning me right now. Uh, there's no reason for me to keep this thing alive, so I'm just going to go for the knockoff. I don't know what he's holding. Wise Glasses or um, Life Orb. Okay, yes, Life Orb. I saw the Life Orb recoil anyway. So here we go. I don't know. I'm going to go for the Bullet Punch. I'm um, expecting me to do a little bit of damage, but, you know, he goes for the Shadow Sneak. That's not that bad of a play. He probably knew the Bullet Punch was coming. Uh, there's no reason for me to... Um, keep this Caesar, considering the fact that, I don't know, I really didn't need to. So here we go, going in for Mega Manectric, I know for a fact that I can outspeed this guy. But at the same time, I don't want to use Thunderbolt because for one, the Porygon 2 would be able to trace it, or he could easily switch into uh, Landorus and get a free switch, and then potentially hit me with Earthquake. So here comes the fun part of the battle. Porygon 2. I don't have knockoff available. Knockoff's not going to do anything. He traces the Intimidate, which is perfectly fine, um, because I'm not a physical attacker. I'm going to go for the Flamethrower. I don't want to go for the Thunderbolt, 
simply because I don't want that Landorus coming in. He's going to go for the Ice Beam right over here. Um, and gets the Freeze! He's getting all the hacks right over here. Luckily for me, I went for Flamethrower and thawed out. My thought process was, okay, well, if I'm frozen, wouldn't, it, wouldn't I use, like, Flamethrower to thaw out? I don't really know the physics of that. So luckily for me, I thaw out first turn, but that does not negate the fact that he got a 10% freeze on that. Anyway, so I was banking for the paralysis. Or no, banking for the burn because I needed some residual damage on this guy. And I'm like, okay, well, he's going to keep on recovering. I'm like, okay, well, my Thunderbolt does a little bit more each time, plus the burn damage. I can keep on whittling him down with Thunderbolt and, and keep on going. Maybe I can stall him out. I can stall him out of the um, potential um, recovers. So here we go, goes for another Ice Beam. Now he's on the better side of this deal simply because right now I wanna hit this Thunderbolt. If I hit this Thunderbolt and knock him out with max damage, I can do it, but no, it doesn't happen. I get a low roll on it, goes for a cover, and he's gonna be able to get right back up to half. Luckily for me, the burn damage is going to continue whittling away his HP. I'm just gonna keep on Thunderbolting because I, I wanna crit, I want something in my favor. I need it. He had four things. He had the critical hit, he had the flinch, he had the burn, he had the freeze. He had all the hacks coming his way, and I'm like, you know what? This is garbage. I can't have a hacks battle. So I need a crit. I'm demanding the game. I'm like, game, give me a crit right now. So he's recovering like maybe about 5% more each time. So every time I Thunderbolt, he's going to recover. And we're just going to go back and forth. I'm like, you know what? I'll just PP stall you. That's fine. Hopefully you didn't use PP Max. And he's like, yeah, I use PP Max on all my stuff. I'm like, okay, great. So I'm like eventually thinking, okay, well, while we're going through this, I'm like, well, can I predict a recover and then switch in Conk Elder? Because I need Conk Elder to, one, knock this item off, or two, use a Drain Punch that's super effective and get my HP back. Or maybe yet, should I switch into Vaporeon um, and try to do some damage with it, predicting the Ice Beam. Um, or should I even bring in Landorus? Um, yeah, I don't even know. I'm, I'm like at a at my wit's end. I don't need to lose this Mega Manectric because it outspeeds his entire team, and that is my win card. So, okay, I'm going to go into Vaporeon. I'm going to see what I can do against this thing. I don't really know what I can do. Um, I have Scald. It's max attack. So I'm going to see how much that does. Let's see. Scald, right? That's going to do... Oh my god, that does nothing. All right, so he reveals his third move, uh, which is Thunder Wave. And luckily for me, I get Thunder Wave. Great. So now I'm a paralyzed Vaporeon. Not really going to do too much work against this thing. Uh, I put a Quick Claw on this Vaporeon, and I went for the Scald. I'm like, heck yeah! Look at that! Look at that health! I could have done it! Had he gone for, like, the Thunderbolt that turn, it would have been over. I would have been done with this stupid Porygon. So, uh, yeah, I switched up the item. I made sure that Conk Elder was Assault Vested this time around, and I put a Quick Claw on Vaporeon just to get that out-of-nowhere surprise attack. So that kind of worked out. So now I get a switch into Conk Elder right over here. I'm like, okay, great. Um, I'm going to be able to mock Punch this guy. This is going to be awesome. It's going to do so much damage because it's super effective. And, uh, you know, so let's do it. Why the heck not? Or should I knock it off? You know, what What can I do? Here comes Landorus. Going for the Intimidate, which is a great play, uh, I might add. But I need to knock off this thing's item. Because, you know, if I sacrifice uh, my Conk Elder in order to knock off that Eviolite, then you know who can come in. Manectra can come in and just start working. So uh, this guy had some safety goggles on pretty much to prevent the spore or any sandstorm damage. I'm going to bring in my own Landorus right now. I don't know what move he wanted to, uh, to hit himself with, maybe to hit with an Earthquake. So luckily for me, I predicted that right. Um, he's going to go for Toxic right here. I'm like, okay, well, Toxic, that's kind of weird on a Landorus. Okay, maybe it's a bulkier variety. So I'm going to go for Knockoff because that's literally the only move that I have against this Landorus because I've got um, U-Turn. I've got uh, Stealth Rock, Earthquake, and I've got Knockoff. So those are my only moves. He's going to go for the U-Turn and get the heck out of there. Um, and I'm going to do the exact same thing or keep on continuing to knock off. So here comes his Quagsire. Now Quagsire is a problem and it will continue to be a problem. So right over here, I'm going to go for the knockoff again. Just try to kill this Landorus because I can take a little bit more toxic damage. That's not a problem. So right off the bat, I'm thinking, okay, well, I'm going to be able to U-turn. Maybe this thing's going to go for a Scald. 
Uh, maybe I can bring in Vaporeon, get a little bit of the water absorbed back, get some health, um, or just scare this thing out with another Hidden Power Grass. So it goes for the Waterfall. Luckily for me, I'm able to get a little bit of health back. It really wasn't that much, but it's the fact that now I've got my checkmate against them, against this Quagsire, every single time. So here comes Togekiss. I'm going to go for the Hidden Power Grass, regardless of if it's going to be resisted by anyone. And lo and behold, I get the Parahax. Okay, well, yes, that's part of the game. Yeah, I understand that. I'm not going to stay in on this thing because, for one, we're both paralyzed, and he's faster, so he's going to get the flinches on me. Um, right over here, I'm going for the Intimidate, hoping that he's going to get the um, um, Paralysis, but no, he goes for the Roost. And that's not good because now he's back at full health and it's going to take me a lot more damage to get him right back down. So here we go, super effective, um, and he goes for the Air Slash. I don't know what he's trying to do, but Air Slash is going to do a lot of damage, but not enough. So he knows that this next Thunderbolt is going to kill him, um, so I need to do something. I can't go for Thunderbolt because I know that he's got his Landorus and he's got his Quagsire. So I go for the Hidden Power Ice, uh, predicting him to switch out. And I knew that the Hidden Power Ice would have killed from that range. So um, I'm going to go for the Hidden Power again. I just need to kill this thing. And luckily for me, I get a good roll on that one. I knock the Quagsire the heck out of here. And I'm doing very well. Here comes a bad matchup that I didn't want to be in. Simply because if I take one Ice Beam, I am going to die. And I need Mega Manectric to kill super effectively on the Togekiss and super effectively on the Landorus. So I need to preserve this uh, Mega Manectric at all costs. I need to sacrifice everyone else to try to kill this Porygon in order to do so. So here comes Vaporeon. Um, not necessarily a good matchup as we talked about before, simply because I'm paralyzed and he can just recover. Um, he can hit me with Ice Beams. I don't know what his fourth move is. It's probably a maybe Charge Beam or Thunderbolt or something. So he reveals Thunderbolt right here. Um, I don't have the Assault Vest, so I'm only going to be taking like maybe three of these, maybe two of them. Um, I don't know, depending on luck or min-max damage. So hopefully for me, I can go through, I can continuously hit him with more Scalds and put that pressure on him um, so that he can run out of recoveries. That's my game plan here. I need to stall him out of recoveries. I finally get a critical hit, but the critical hit didn't even matter because it wasn't at a point where I needed it. You know what I mean? So here we go. Go for the Quick Claw Paralysis. Yes! Go Vaporeon. Only two Quick Claw activations, but when I play against everyone else with Quick Claw, it's like every other turn. So whatever. It doesn't matter. So here we go. Um, I'm, I'm going to be able to switch out here. I'm thinking, all right, so he's going to recover. I'm going to go into Landorus. If he goes for Ice Beam, you know what? I've got the Yachi Berry. I can survive one of them and then just retaliate even more. So he goes for the Thunderbolt. I predicted that, so that's why I switched into Landorus. Um, I could go for the knockoff right here. Um, and he he needs this Eviolite on this thing, or else he, it's game over for him. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm actually going to go for the Earthquake because I want to kill this thing. Um, I was debating. I'm like, knockoff, Earthquake, it doesn't matter. So here we go. Goes for the Ice Beam. I have the Yachi Berry. Luckily for me, and bam, survive with uh, 12 HP. But that really doesn't matter because the poison is going to... Um, affect me. So I think I should have knocked off that, I should have knocked off rather than Earthquake. Um, because right here uh, is where Conk Elder comes in. I'm like, okay, look, that's a quarter health. I can mock punch that. I can go from there. I can get him. I can get him. Get him. Get him. Get him. Oh my god, that did not do enough. Goes for a cover. I'm like, great. There goes everything. There goes everything. Because right now, Conk Elder's got nothing. Conk is going to get owned by an Ice Beam and then die. So, he goes for Thunderbolt. I'm like, all right, well, I'm just going to go for Drain Punch. I survive that. Go for Drain Punch. This is good. Right here. Get all that health back. And now, the tide is in my favor. This is wonderful. Simply because he can't touch me. The burn damage is going to knock him out. And I am all set. This is good. So, the huge threat that was Porygon 2, that I had an opportunity to... Um, knock out with a knockoff. Um, I didn't, but I knocked him out. That's it. He's over. So now I've got the Intimidate, um, which is not good. Um, I'm debating, okay, well, you know what? I'm just going to stay in. I'm not going to switch out. I don't need Conk Elder for anything. Conk Elder can't do anything against um, Togekiss. Um, I can't do anything against his Landorus. Uh, but now I've got my win card, which is Mega Manectric. So that's it. 
I'm gonna go through, intimidate this guy, go for Hidden Power Ices for the entire win. Unless something changes. Unless something changes. And I know that you guys have seen that I've got hacked to death on this whole battle here. So here we go, Landorus is down. Got the Togekiss. Togekiss, getting hit by the Stealth Rock. Here we go, going for T-Bolt, 100% accurate, done. Get Togekiss out of here. Oh man, I'm like on fire right now. I'm like, oh my God, yes, yes, that is it. Done, got him, win game. Okay, so that was it, ladies and gentlemen. It was a 50 turn battle, 50 turn battle that took, no, I don't know it was 50 turns. Um, it was 49 minutes though, let me tell you, it was a 49 minute battle against uh, Mr. AGZ. Um, that was amazing. That was really, really amazing. Um, I actually want to show you a picture that I have uh, with Mr. AGZ and myself um, right over here. Bam. Okay, let me see. I got to make it big, though. Oh, my goodness gracious. There we have it. Done. Mr. AGZ and myself right in the hotel lobby. Um, looking good. Let me make that big right over there for you guys. And that's it. So a 50 minute long battle, the timer was down to like 11 minutes left. I'm like, oh my God, how is this going to end? I needed to make sure Mega Manectric was alive in order to outspeed the rest of his team and kill him. So that is how you play Pokemon, ladies and gentlemen. So right over here, we have a um, diploma that says, uh, PAX Pokemon League proudly recognizes that Abdallah's Match 026 has entered the PAX Pokemon League South 2015 Hall of Fame Congratulations. So there we have it. Pretty awesome. Pretty awesome. So that's me and him shaking hands, taking a picture. It was an epic battle. Um, yeah, you can visit the PAX Pokemon League site. You'll see me on there uh, along with some others. He said that he lost legitimately three times, but um, had some close battles and called them winners, I think like two times. So wow. What did you guys think of that? That was awesome. Whenever you get to see a, a Pokemon battle against two people that know how to play the game, it's outstanding. It really is. So, that is it. I don't really want to leave this screen. This is a very good screen here. But that was it. Wow. The end. That's the end of the playlist for uh, PAX Pokemon League. Uh, if you guys want to see me battle some of the other trainers, um, such as... Um, I think there was a couple on there. Yeah, I didn't even know. There was a couple on there that I didn't even get to battle. Like the Ice Trainer, and then there was uh, another trainer. And I didn't even read um, Mr. AGZ's The Champion, General a General Jeezy's bio. All right, well, I owe it that much to him. So here we go. I'll read the bio. <laughs> right straight from the uh, straight from the site. Okay, so here we go. Mr. AGZ was the worst cadet of his boot camp class. After graduating, he was nicknamed Carp and forced to babysit his unit's Magikarp, which some cruel soldiers kicked around when they were bored. He felt animosity towards Magikarp as a reflection of his own weakness and abuse, but liked the fact that someone respected and needed him. A year later, their unit was sent on a critical mission. After an ambush, Mr. Ajizi's unit was wiped out except for him and Magikarp. While wandering through the sand, he eventually passed out from the desert sun. Mr. Ajizi spoke of what he thought were his last words to the Pokeball, telling Magikarp not to worry, someone would find him and take care of him. Suddenly, Magikarp freed himself and splashed Mr. AGZ until he came to. As he woke, all Mr. AGZ could remember uh, were the words of another cadet, cadet, Surge. Pokemon are the best soldiers you can ask for, and even better comrades. Uh, Mr. AGZ pressed on and was rescued by another unit. He worked his way up to the ranks of the military as a trainer, remembering Surge's words. Now known as General GZ and champion of the PAX Pokemon League, um, he eagerly awaits any and all challenges uh, that want to test their team and enter the Hall of Fame. So there we go. We are in the Hall of Fame for PAX South 2015. It was amazing. I love this thing. I'm going to get this framed up in the man cave down here. It's going to be great. I can't wait to be at PAX Pokemon League uh, from PAX East 2015 and PAX Prime 2015. It's going to be amazing. I can't wait to see you guys there as well. If you enjoyed the episode, definitely smash that like button. Go check out Mr. AGZ's channel. And uh, yeah, of course, if you have more time, check out the playlist right over here. PAX East 2014. Um, and PAX Prime 2014. 
of all of the awesome Pokemon battles. So it was very cool. If you guys want to see other PAX Pokemon battles um, against the trainers that I didn't get to battle, let me know in the comments and we can possibly arrange something like that. So until next time, follow me on Twitter, subscribe, smash the like button. We'll see you later. And thank you guys for watching each and every one of these episodes. Truly, truly, I appreciate it. See you guys.